Hey everyone, I'm sorry about the the lighting. Um, it's like twenty to five in the morning, and uh, I'm at work. And but uh, you know we've had a lot of stuff happening here the last few days, um, as far as the Second Amendment's concerned and our rights here in this country. Um, it's looking like it's getting closer and closer for Virginia that uh, they're going to pass these uh, tyrannical bills, these uh, totally unconstitutional bills. And, you know, all of the uh, Democratic uh, candidates for president are doubling down on some of their idiotic statements. Uh, so far as to uh, Joe Biden uh, threaten the use of fighter jets and missiles against the people of America. Th I mean, stuff's getting real, and uh, there's some decisions that need to be made. And I know that many people within their their own groups of family and friends are discussing this um, it's it's not just you it's not just the ones that watch channels like this uh, you know I was thinking about it and uh, something popped in my mind you know just a what if what if back during the large Virginia rally when you had 20,000 plus people there and some say it was more than that that those numbers were skewed but let's just say you had 20,000 plus people there what if it had happened a little differently what if all those people would have surrounded the capitol building nobody choosing to go inside and they just fell silent for a period of about half an hour um, you know, and when that length of time of everybody just standing there quietly staring, um, that's going to start to pique some interest. And then what if, and, and this is just a what if scenario, what if at that time, after about a period of half an hour, a small group of, uh, of the people's delegates, you know, stepped forward and went inside and went in and made the announcement that, okay, listen, the party's over, you know, uh, any elected officials that opposed these unconstitutional laws are welcome to stay and govern, but those that feel the need to be tyrannical you know it's done you've got and they say they gave them an hour to uh, resign uh, or else I mean that we're looking at a situation like that coming to America you know everybody's been pretty civil about this um, you know everybody that's pro-constitutional anyway has been pretty civil about this um, they just had uh, the the first vote on on the really bad bill in Virginia uh, whenever that passed and the people erupted because you know that's not what we want uh, they were ordered to leave by the police there. And I see so many, so many posts, so many comments where people, you know, are saying, oh, you know, the police aren't going to do this, the police aren't going to do that. Well, you know, some of them won't, but some of them will. I wonder if any of those gentlemen that were working that day uh, if they question what they did, 
I mean, it's my personal opinion that by their oath, they should have turned and arrested those legislators that had tried voting in an unconstitutional bill and and uh, the, they needed to be arrested and imprisoned. We're getting no help. You know, you would think as much as much talk as there is out there of a second civil war and of a second revolution, you would think at some point when things like this are happening in the states and some of these governors and officials are trying to push these bad bills, you would think at some point <clears throat> the federal government would step in and say, no, listen, you can't do that. That's you're going completely against the U.S. Constitution. You have to stay within that realm of the Constitution. Even though, the, like the most recent I've heard from the Supreme Court says that, you know, the AR-15 is considered to be in common use and therefore covered by the Second Amendment, which all firearms should be covered by the Second Amendment. We shouldn't have a, 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 a the NFA and stuff like that. <clears throat> but nobody's stepping up and saying anything. It's just almost like they're just waiting to see what the people do. You know, are the people going to sit down and swallow that? Or, or you know, what's it going to come to? And, it, and are they going to let it get... <clears throat> too heated to stop <clears throat> you know i i just saw a thing that it, it that bill in virginia passed another segment um uh, you know it's getting closer the their uh, house of representatives i believe it was is had passed it and i mean this is the these are the same people that are from what i've read are wanting to have early release from prison for rapists and murderers, but yet they want to, they want to give, hand down a sentence of 12 months imprisonment for every standard capacity magazine a person has. <clears throat> you know, uh, it, it kind of, uh, it kind of mirrors, uh, story in the Bible you might be familiar with, you know, when, when Jesus was brought up, uh, in, in front of, uh, Pontius Pilate, I believe it was, <clears throat> and it was him and a, uh, in a, in a prisoner there, and the people voted to free the, the prisoner, the murderer, the, you know, and, uh, That's kind of the same, it's like the same stories keep happening over and over throughout life. And uh, it's it's just a really, really bad situation. Uh, where do we go from here? You know, we've got this new bill that's trying to be passed that's going to open several states, mine included, thankfully, to enter into a compact to where they're going to be kind of almost like a Second Amendment sanctuary group of states. I mean, which is great, but to me, that sounds like the beginnings of a balkanization of America. You know, if you look into the Balkans and and uh, do a little bit of history research and everything, you'll see how that land was was separated and split up and become different countries and states. And and I think that's kind of where the country's headed. It's uh, it's it's really strange. You know, we may have a 
compact of states, a group of states that uh, that band together and say, "Listen, you know, we're going to stand with the with our constitution, and that's how we're going to govern." And you know, if you don't like that, you know, you're free to move out to to some of these other places that are wanting to do away with it and and install uh, socialism. Um, and likewise, people that are in those places are going to want to come to an area, you know, that represents them. And, uh, you know, and it's more than just supporting the Second Amendment. They're talking about, you know, that these things will be allowed to be manufactured right in these states. So, you know, that may even open up you know, some of what people can have and the ease of getting, getting the, the tools you need and the parts and, and I think it would be a really good society. You know, an armed society is a polite society. And the left has shown that they don't know how to be polite. And a lot of these stories, man, have just really shocked me. They have really shocked me. But to hear a, especially hearing a, a presidential candidate who was a vice president of the United States threaten the American people with fighter jets and missiles and say that the Second Amendment doesn't apply to everyone, uh, it only applies to, to certain certain people just I don't know man <laughs> guys I'm not gonna drag this out too long some things for you to think about some things for you to talk about with your family and friends uh, with any groups that you're affiliated with and you know stock up stock up guys be uh be prepared for anything that comes down the pike, you know. Just uh, sad, sad times. We are living in in a very rapidly changing world, in a very rapidly changing country. Well, guys, until next time, remember, keep your head on a swivel. Practice whatever you want to be good at and question everything.